It's time for the 11 o'clock session of Be The Talk. Thanks so much for joining us here today. We've got Linda, Crystal, myself, and Angelie. Let's give everybody a big wave. Hi. Linda, if you can if you can kind of frame your face and bring your camera down a little bit, that way when I'm this is my this is my greatest fear. When I'm interviewing amazing women like like I have here on the show today, when we get into the side by side, I want to be parallel. I want to be, you know, we are equals here, right, ladies? Maybe More I equals. should do it again from my computer instead of from my phone. Well, just just make sure that I'm not sitting higher than you because I don't ever want to be looking man or woman or or anyone else. I not want to be talk talking down to anybody else. So we'll we'll so, work on that when it's your turn, Linda. Okay. <laughs> well, tell me what you see. You see like the half of my face? Or I right, see right? this. I'm kind of seeing this. And I want to see this. I want to see that. <laughs> no, and you went the other way. Right. So now now I'm there. There you go. That's what we want to see. Okay. See, this is all right. Everybody at home, when you're doing this called presentation, you know, I call it frame the, the camera, crush the camera. This is what I'm doing in the Get Accepted course right now that I'm doing for just a, a bunch of uh, trial folks that are helping me build that thing out. And it's like frame your face is what I call it. Frame your face. So, uh, all right. So we're going to we're going to jump on here before we actually get behind. We're going to say temporarily uh, uh, see you over in the green room. Linda, see you over in the green room, Crystal, but you are literally, Crystal is in the green room <laughs> right now, which is great. I actually hit the wrong button, so we're going to move Linda back to the green room. going to move Crystal, who is already in the green room, into the other green room. And Angelie, just you and me right now. All How right. about it? That sounds good. Isn't this great? Now, oh, shoot, we just covered your wonderful Cleveland shirt, ah. all, all of the Cleveland people, but we got your name uh, there now, which works just great. Um, and now I am going to just uh, practice your bio. Uh, looks like you sent me your LinkedIn profile, Angelie. Uh, yes, that's correct. All right. So Anjali Bindra Patel is a TEDx speaker, Harvard Business School founder of Seeing L2, Seeing I2I.com, intergenerational video gaming group to empower challenged youth, a semifinalist for Encore.org's nationwide inter innovative intergenerational program and the world's best mom. So I will say that again <laughs> in a way that reads a little bit better, okay. but that's, that's what I see from the yeah, form. Yeah. I, I don't do like live editing anymore. I just do that verbally that the best good. that I can. So yep, that was, that works. I think now we're about 65%, but uh, from, from what I'm looking at, that's not. So Anjali Bindra Patel is a TEDx speaker, Harvest, Harvard, B Business, Harvard Business School alumni. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to start with alumni of the Harvard Business School. Uh, she's the founder of SeeingEye2Eye.com. Uh, and a semi-finalist for Encore.org's nationwide innovative inter intergenerational <laughs> program, mouthful. as well as being the world's best mom. Yeah, that's why I read it out loud. You know, it, you, you might type it out, but I read it out loud because, you, you know, until you read it out loud, uh -huh. you know, you don't know what you're dealing with that is so true. until you read it out loud. So we're going to we're going to work with that. Uh, right here. And uh, if you can give me a five count, Angeli, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Very good. Uh, any questions before I hit the big hot no, button? No, no. I mean, I'm ready to roll and we'll just kind of see where it goes. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We are live in three, two. We are live with Angeli Bindra Patel. Angeli, are you ready to talk? Let's do it. Anjali Bindra Patel is an alumni of the Harvard Business School, as well as the founder of SeeingEyeToEye.com. She's a semi-finalist currently competing for the finals for Encore.org's nationwide innovative intergenerational program, as well as being the world's best mom. Anjali Patel, welcome to the talk. <laughs> Thank you. World's best mom that changes on a daily basis, depending on my children's moods. So uh, they gave me that award one day and I'm going to ride with that. So write it out. Disclaimer out there. 
Your talk is called The Power of Intergenerational Friendships. Mm -hmm. And my highlight, uh, favorite part of your talk, you're talking about how you just gave birth, have a picture of your, I believe it was your son right there, yeah. with a look on his face as you are talking about some of your new mommy insecurities and your son's look on his face as if to say, tell me you're not this clueless mom. Yeah, he still he still has that look on his face 10 years. Oh, in. <laughs> oh my word. Well, it was it got a great laugh out of the audience. I think uh, the American culture, maybe Canadian culture to a lesser degree. I think we're in a crisis right now because we've got generational divides. We have the Xers and the boomers and the millennia and we all rip on each other and the, the greatest generation instead of being unified. So show us the way forward. Take us behind the talk. Sure. So I guess I'll start by just kind of um, showing you guys my motivation to um, get into this area and research the area. Um, and as you pointed to, it all kind of started um, when our first son was born, because I am a researcher and I like to plan. And this uh, baby, we knew he was coming, but you just don't know uh, what to do when they, he actually uh, showed up. So I'm sitting there, he's crying. Um, my instinct is get as many books as possible. Start Googling, research, how do you take care of babies? And I'm um, you know, eyeball deep in books. And my husband pointed to me and he said, you know what, um, looks like your parents have the situation under control. And um, maybe he just needs that contact. He likes that contact with his grandparents. And it's sort of like a light bulb went off in my head right then and there. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, um, sometimes the answer is just human connection and, you know, um, parents, siblings, but what I zoned in on was this grandparent connection that I was seeing, um, happening for the first time in front of me. And I noticed that comfort that my son received from his grandparents. And I also saw the flip, which was the happiness that my son was giving my parents. So this whole concept of intergenerational connection sort of was born around the same time my son was to me. So I got uh, pretty heavily involved in researching this area. And I, the deeper I got, the, the more amazed I was at two things. Number one is that, like you said, there's this divide. Um, and the second thing that really struck me is why? Because there's so much research out there showing the benefits of connecting these generations. And if you kind of look back to that whole um, t it takes a village mentality, what happened to that? You know, I sometimes feel like a lot of us are kind of on our own, trying to do everything, be everything mm -hmm. to everyone. And at some point, that's going to take a toll on the best of us. And I think that um, there's a lot of good things with technology these days, and we can actually use that technology to sort of connect people. I think that sometimes people vilify technology. Well, technology is isolating us. Not really. Not when you use it in the right mm -hmm. way. Look at what we're yeah, doing it's now. It's the use of technology in a polarizing way that isolates us. Absolutely. So, man. Yeah, well, it, it's powerful. I, I'm going to throw this in here, uh, Angeli. I mean, we, we need to find ways to be vulnerable, to be able to connect with one another. Mm -hmm. I know this past weekend, I was a very high level mastermind and they had like a little hot seat and there were only seven of us, seven or eight of us, seven in the mentor. And I had to take my place in the hot seat and I wanted to be very intentional because it was very high level and, and uh, investment and everything else. And so I was going to be open and let the other people know a little bit of my stuff. And when I did, it was a little more emotional than I'd like it to be. But once I did, oh my gosh, it was like a weight off of me. And I realized, oh, how disconnected have I been and how disconnected are so many of us. And this is what we're seeing in our culture right now. The results, uh, tragic results many times yes. of people just walking around with their story and their stress and not letting the other people around them unlock it. That's absolutely it's powerful. True. And there's so, a, yeah, there's an yeah, epidemic. Go on, go on. Loneliness is really an epidemic. It's making people physically ill. 
Um, there's children who are suffering from record numbers um, and suffering from anxiety, depression, loneliness, so, so, social isolation. And then you have that same thing in the older generation and, and the middle generation as well. Um, and so it's sort of intuitive. Hey, you know what? Um, there's a bunch of us that need connection. Why are we making it so hard to actually do it? And um, part of the problem, I think, is that uh, these days, and you know, I was part of the problem. You know, um, when my kids were younger, I would sort of gravitate towards. I'm like, hey, let's go meet these neighbors because they have kids the same age as you, um, or let's go to the playground because I know there's kids your exact age over there. And it's sort of taught to our kids because I, I have noticed that when kids are younger, they don't care. They'll go to someone who's 89 years old. And then yeah. you sort of as parents sort of lull them, hey, why don't you go into that playroom and go talk to those kids your own age? And there's nothing wrong with that. But when we start self-segregating, we raise our children to be that way. Um, and there's just too many benefits that we leave on the table when we ignore that intergenerational connecting uh, tissue that we all sort of have innately. Well, it's almost like the the dark underbelly or the morphing of branding. Like th this country, we're all into branding and we're conditioned to do branding and we have our conditioning of our different grade levels and we assign meaning and value and worth and similarity and, and rite of passage to that instead of just connecting like they would do anywhere else in any other civilization. So, I mean, it's a powerful thing. Um, it, it, what, what do you have to say about that? I think that it is a powerful thing. I think that it's a topic that we sort of, um, we've been dormant on this. And I think that now is the critical uh, mass where we need to actually do something. And I think the reason why now it's so important more than ever is that you see the life expectancy and how much it's increased. So, I mean, the whole um, concept of just writing someone off because they're whatever age you wanna throw out, 65, that's preposterous. Um, People are living much longer. They have productive lives. They have a lot to offer to the other generations. And um, we got to face that. And even if you look at this from a business perspective, it's unwise to ignore this gigantic baby boomer population right now. Um, it's, it's not good from a business perspective. It's not good from a personal perspective. And it's not good from a health perspective either. So right now is sort of a time we've seen, um, at least in, in my research and the people that I've been talking to, I kind of see a, a, a movement forming where more and more people, um, you'll see intergenerational schools, you'll see programs where um, people are trying to connect generations because they're worried. They're worried about the health of everyone around them, the, the mental health um, and the benefits that you see, they're amazing. Um, just kind of from a child's perspective, knowing that you have this sort of unconditional, non-judgmental older friend is pretty amazing. Um, and peers are just as valuable, but just having someone that's outside that box. I don't go to school with you. I don't mm -hmm. care what you're wearing. I don't care what video games you have. I'm just here. I'm just going to listen. Um, that can go a very long way, um, especially growing up today. It's tough. Talk Universe, we all need somebody to learn from. That's part of the reason we have Be The Talk podcast. You mm -hmm. want to give that talk to change the world, you're going to have to hear from other people like Anjali who have gone the way. And that's what we're here to do. So that being said, we've been talking with Anjali Bindra Patel. Her talk is called The Power of Intergenerational Friendships. And we're pivoting over to you in just a moment, Talk Universe, for the Blitz Round. And it's time for the Blitz Round with Anjali Bindra Patel. I'm going to ask Anjali a series of either or questions related to the preparation and performance of her talk, The Power of Intergenerational Friendships. Anjali, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. First question. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I was invited to speak, um, but I had applied prior to being invited to speak at a different mm -hmm. um, TEDx conference. And so... Um, it just kind of goes to show, um, you know, something doesn't work out the first first go around. Um, don't lay down. Just wait. Try, try again. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you walk out on stage. Were you nervous or were you in the zone or neither or both? 
You know, um, it was everything. Yeah, it, it's hard not to be. I'm generally not um, too nervous speaking. Um, I get more nervous um, doing, you know, I don't know, climbing heights or something. However, um, that was an exception. I was crazy nervous. However, once you get out there, the lights go on. After a while, you can't really see anybody there and you float into this other zone. And um, I had my husband sitting in the front row. So I kind of had that safety net right there. And um, the people that there's something about TEDx talks that people um, who haven't attended should know. The audience is so receptive. They mm -hmm. want to hear what you have to say. It's not a combative audience. They are um, extremely warm and generous um, as listeners. And so they sort of um, kind of cut that fear out of you once you get up there. What's a tip, tool, or technique that you use to better prepare? Um, well, we had uh, the benefit of having coaching. So um, I think that that's something that is always useful in any context, because you might have the best talk in the world. But if it's not delivering the way that you think it is, then it's not going to have any impact. And so for me, I guess the tip was if you can get a coach, it doesn't have to be someone with the title coach, it could be um, your spouse or a friend or somebody whose opinion that you value whose opinion might be a little different than your own that can kind of give you a fresh perspective on what it is that you're trying to deliver. Angeli, were you an opener? Were you a closer or were you in between? I was in between. I'm trying to think of exactly where I was in this. Uh, that part of the day is a little bit of a blur. I think. Yeah, I that's why I only have three <laughs> broad categories. So yeah, in between, what, what's your advice for other people in the middle? Um, just take a deep breath. And, um, you know, everybody thinks that they have the worst time slot, right? The person who goes first <laughs> is, uh, you know, oh my gosh, I have to set the tone. The person who goes last is like, all the good talks are already over. And the people in the middle are like, no one's going to remember or care what we're saying, because it's right when people are starting to get, you know, a little tired. Um, there's no really good or bad place to be. I think that, uh, like, I, like I pointed to earlier, there's always people who are, are willing to listen and they're familiar with the format of how these talks roll. And I think that that's why TED Talks are limited in mm -hmm. length. So, you know, you're not going to go on for half an hour. People do have mm -hmm. the attention span and want to listen. So um, you have, I think it's what, 17 minutes or so. Um, make your point. And um, there's people out there who care about your point. And so those are some things to remember. My last question to you, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk? Oh, um, during the talk, the I had some slides going in the background and uh, you can't see what's behind you. And I had some slides and I was expecting a certain reaction. I'm like, okay, this is going to like, this is going to kill it. These people are going to be dying laughing. And, and I thought I had pulled the slide up and it's just this weird uh, moment of silence. And I'm like, well, that's weird. It's supposed to be funny. And I look behind me and I'm like, oh my God, the slide's not on. Mm -hmm. So um, it felt like that went on for hours and actuality is probably like five or six seconds. Um, so that was probably the most um, strange or unique thing that happened. But like I said, the audience was just like, we're cool with it. You know, um, the, we'll wait till it comes up. And when it did, you just kind of pick up where you left off. And so um, you just kind of learn, you know what? You got to roll with the punches. Um, you can't freeze. Keep going. We've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Anjali Bindra Patel, and her talk is called The Power of Intergenerational Friendships. You can find out more about that talk. You can actually watch that talk, and I would encourage you to do so. If you don't want to type that into YouTube, you can go to our show notes page at be the talk. Dot com. We'll have a link where you can watch it, as well as we'll have a link where you can connect with Anjali over on LinkedIn. And we'll be back in just a moment with Anjali Bindra Patel and the final word of advice. And we're back. It's time for the final word of advice with Anjali Bindra Patel for Talk Universe. All right. Is, is this my turn to give any piece of advice? All right. So I would say... Um, my advice would be um, be vulnerable um, because that's how you sometimes meet people and gain strength um, from others is by letting them know that you need it. Um, I've always been sort of the stoic. Uh, I got it. I got it. No, no worries. I have 17 grocery bags in my hand. No worries. I got it. Um, over the years, I've kind of learned, you know what, if I if you don't know or you need help, 
just say something and you would be surprised. I think human nature um, in general is good. And there's a lot of good people out there and you just kinda, you gotta ask. And when you do that, you'll see your world opening up, different generations, different backgrounds, different people. Um, and that's how you can enrich the life that you're living. Angeli Bindra Patel, thank you so much for coming on the thank talk you. today. Go and sharing your fun. wisdom with Talk Universe. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, I gotta. Sometimes I get messed up which uh, red button to hit. So as long as I don't hit the one, hit the one where uh, where it um, cuts this entire feed off, that's uh, that's a win. So just uh, just a reminder, we still are on Facebook Live, so you can wiggle your finger like the creepy kid from The Shining used to do over the share button. Okay. Help promote Angelie's talk. Help promote Crystal's talk that uh, Crystal's about to join us here. And Linda is going to be uh, pulling up the uh, last slot here for us. So I'm going to bring Crystal over here. Angela is our newest. Congratulations, our newest talk alumni. So any advice to uh, Crystal as to what she's in for right now? Um, no, I mean, you know what? It's just like a person like you're at a bar with a friend. Um, and, uh, he's pretty, uh, casual tone and easygoing. So, um, you know, you almost don't think you're even on a podcast. It just seems like you're talking to someone. So, uh, well, as long as he's buying, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Hey, well, uh, awesome. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll escort Angeli back to the green room. I have this little thing where I like to be on the left instead of on the right. So I don't know why that is. So for whatever reason, this platform, it's it, it looks so nice, but I have to fight against it to get it set up in basic ways that I want. So I'm going to also, because this is the only way we can do that, I'm going to escort Crystal back to the green room. And then, yes, I'm going to escort myself back to the green room. But don't worry, we'll be right back immediately. I just want to get on the left side of the screen. See? Why why couldn't they do that in a different way? I just don't understand. But uh we're we're back. I'm on the left. We got Crystal, we got her name up there. I'm pointing opposite because I still haven't gotten the habit, the backwards habit down yet. Yeah, you're 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 over that way. No, I'm I you gotta reverse it to point to me. You're pointing the wrong they, yeah, now you're pointing to me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Well, great. So now we're going to practice the, um, uh, Crystal, you're going to make the, the bio easier for me. <laughs> and I, the last I tried. One. I All right. Hey, tried. I appreciate that. All right. B bonus points. All right. And it's Kadakia. Uh, Kadakia. All right. Crystal Kadakia is an international keynoter, leading author, and experienced consultant, helping leaders reimagine the workplace for a digital world. Her unconventional, her unconventional millennial approach has reached clients from the United States to Norway to China, and she is a 30 under 30 winner. Love it. And we are talking about, uh, I think, millennials, digital coma or digitally powered. However, this is this is really a dialogue about you and your expertise and you're your a multiple TEDx speaker. So you can don't this isn't. You know, this isn't a pop quiz. Whatever you forget, it's fine. Whatever you remember, fine. But this is really about highlighting you as the millennial expert. So uh, any questions for me? And then we'll we'll jump right in. Nope. Sounds good. All right. Well, we are live in three, two. Oh, you know what I need to do, Crystal? If you can give me a five count. Sorry about that. <laughs> One, two, yeah. three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we could uh, let's bring you up just a little bit here on the mixer. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. For whatever reason, huh? Want me to try okay. that again? One last time. I'm sorry. It's okay. One, two, three, four, five. All right, great. Good deal. We are live in three, two. We are live with Crystal Kadakia. Crystal, are you ready to talk? Hit it. 
Crystal Kadakia is an international keynoter, a leading author, and an experienced consultant, helping leaders reimagine the workplace for a digital world. Crystal's unconventional millennial approach has reached clients from the United States to Norway to China. Crystal is also a 30 under 30 winner. Crystal Kadakia, welcome to the talk. Thanks so much. Glad to be here. So your talk is called Millennials Digital Coma or Digitally Empowered, and you've you've given multiple. Your other one is called Corporate Fail, Gen Z are Entrepreneurial. And uh, you talk a lot about just the concept of YOLO out there. Uh, 72% of millennials, this is very interesting to me. I didn't know 72% want to be business owners. And if you can help me understand this a little outside as well, but I know they heavily uh, favored uh, Bernie Sanders as a group in the last election, which, I'll, you know, that that's, you know, I, I'm an old stodgy Gen Xer here. So that that doesn't quite uh, make sense to me, but that's why we're having an open dialogue. I want to learn. I want to discover how those two things are uh, congruous as well. And uh, you, you talk about YOLO. You only live once. And I love how you spell out uh, how I feel. Why am I doing this podcast? Because I don't want to be behind the desk, shackled, all the things that you mentioned that, you know, no future and do what somebody else says and hierarchies and all of that stuff that you mentioned. I like to say I'm the 43 year old millennial, but, or at least I self identify as a millennial. That's, that's my little tie in, but uh, over to you, Crystal Kadakia. Welcome to the talk. Thanks so much. Yeah. You know, I've talked about many things and I think for me, the heart of it is really examining how digital technology has changed people's worldviews and especially millennials growing up in that environment and even more so Generation Z. And so what I talk about in both of those talks is I talk a little bit about the positives and the ways that we can leverage technology in a way that benefits us. And I talk about what happens when we don't think about it, when we start to become consumers of digital technology or in the workplace, when we're not consciously adapting to the fact that digital is here, it's not going away for any generation. And so I spend a lot of time thinking about, and that's what I've been really struck by is how are we using technology in a way that fuels us versus disempowers us or disenfranchises us or confuses us or overwhelms us. And so um, I've, I've thought a lot about millennials specifically because I'm a millennial for one thing. And I, I really feel like we're a very pivotal generation because we're the last generation to remember a world before the internet. And that's a huge statement, right? It's if you think back to when uh, electricity was invented, right? It was a very before and after. There was a time before that where nobody knew anything about a world with electricity. And after that, it's, you know, it's instant and it changes the world and skills become obsolete. Some skills are new, other skills are transferred. And it's, you know, it's an incredible change. And there's people who will be born who no longer remember the world before electricity. And that's the same transition we're going through now. And it's an important one because in this one, we're dealing with the way we learn, the way we communicate, the way we take in information. Those are all things that have to do with the way our brains are wired. And so we're seeing rewiring happening so fast. And the thing that really started bothering me was when we got into this whole cycle about complaining about millennials, when really it was like, hey guys, this, this is just a symptom. This is a generation that's growing up with this digital technology that, by the way, you're selling and marketing to us and you're not going to uninvent. So you need to start thinking about the impacts of digital, especially in the place where we spend most of our days, which is at work. And that's where we are lagging the most in terms of adapting to digital technology. Our personal lives, fully digital, no problem. Corporate workplaces, it's like dinosaur times and mm. we've got to figure out how to adapt. And both of those talks touch on those topics. Well, and it's a massive, massive pain point. And really what it is, regardless of what side you're on, 
in terms of uh, your generation. So it's not about the side, it's about your age and your generation. What, what, regardless of which generation you're in, this is about learning from one another, and this is about making, uh, making uh, sense of the world that we're in right now. So my uh, my uh, uh, tech ninja Lester will will cut this piece out. So we lost you. We got you back again. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, Crystal. Nathan, did I lose you there? Oh, uh, I think I think you're losing us now because I brought you back. <laughs> Angeli, Linda, are you seeing what What are you uh, seeing? Are you seeing Crystal? I'm seeing Crystal, but it looks like she <laughs> there she went again. She's in the green room. I'm seeing her going back and forth to the green room. Lester, I apologize. Looks like we have this is funny because we're talking about technology. And as a man, you wouldn't wouldn't you think that the tech gods would would begin to uh, throw down their wrath upon us as we start investigating the uh, the issues and the divisive issues of technology. All right, hey, Facebook Live, we are live. This is live, and you know you know things are pretty bad out there in tech world when you're talking about how wired things are. And things go a little bit haywire. Um, Crystal is in the green room, but there's some kind of communication thing. Hey, Crystal, I've got you back, but I don't hey. know that you can. Oh, I can hear you now. All right. Can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. And that's enough to continue. So. <laughs> okay. Super strange. I'm not sure what's going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's the gods of technology are beginning to uh to vent their fury against us. So uh as a result, we only have audio from Crystal, which is perfectly fine for podcasts. So we're just gonna keep right on going. So okay. as I as I was saying until I was so rudely interrupted by the gods of technology that threw a couple of little things in the mix. Doesn't matter which generation you're a part of. This is a really important discussion for you because we're trying to bring things back together. Crystal's trying to bring it back together. I'm trying to bring it back together. And all of us have plenty of things that we need to do to have to adapt, to have to be super flexible, to kind of bite our lip a little bit and listen to the other people. Who are out there now? You know the boomers and the Xers. You know, like me, we have all kinds of little, little things, but uh, that that we complain about. But millennials have a lot of things as well, and this is the world that we created, like it or not. So, uh, Crystal, back to you. What are some things that we can do to really listen to each other? And and better yet, could you give me just a couple of maybe little case studies of of times that you came into an organization? did a workshop, whatever, you confronted this very thing that I'm talking about and and people were able to work it out. I'd love to hear a couple of stories. Yeah, you know, I think one of the places we've got to start is really in this zone of stop complaining and start putting yourself in each other's shoes. So one of the things that I do that is so fun is um, I recently wrote a book, uh, came out last year called The Millennial Myth. And in it, I address five of the biggest stereotypes we hold about millennials, lazy, entitled, they're the trophy generation, and so on. And one, one of the things I do with that is I do a workshop for companies, and I've gone in and we, we created this millennial-oriented um, game of life. Have you ever played Life? Um, oh, yeah, the game. Oh, I'm a, I'm a Generation Xer. So that's all we had were board games, Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So that, we had board games and the Atari 2600. That's all we had. Exactly. Those are great, right? Get, you know, we, the mind loves a game. And we went back. You could call it, I went old school on you. And mm -hmm. um, in these workshops, we go through a game of life. And we walk through events that have occurred in the last 30 years. We have cross-generational teams playing the game. And they're really talking about and, and thinking about what might it have been like to go through that event as a six-year-old versus a 30-year-old. And just making that shift of instead of being like, well, in the present time, I hate these things about you, to being like, let me form a little bit of empathy here and think about what it might have been like in your shoes. How might that have shaped your view towards work and life? 
that was one of the most powerful workshops I've conducted. And, and at the end, it's just so great to hear people talking on another level, a new language where they're not using those words like lazy and entitled or boomers are, are not into technology and they don't know how to use their phones and I'm their IT support. You know, you just take one step away from those complaints and underneath all of that, you start really finding out that we've got a lot to connect on, a lot to learn from one another and a lot that we could do to build a better workplace in the future. Things don't always have to be done the way they've been done because we do have things that can make life easier now. So why not use some of those things? Well, we've been enjoying this discussion with Crystal Kadakia. Oh my word, what a cool sounding workshop that is. She's given a couple of talks. One of them is called Cor Corporate Fail, Gen Z are Entrepreneurial. And uh, we're going to talk more with Crystal in just a moment over in the Blitz Round. Welcome back to the Blitz Round with Crystal Kadaki. I'm about to ask Crystal a series of either or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent talk. Crystal, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. First off, were you invited to speak or did you apply? So the first TED Talk I did, I applied to speak and they were still looking for speakers. So it worked out great. The second one, I was invited to speak. And that's something that I think is really cool. Once you've done one mm -hmm. TED Talk, people come to you. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, would you call yourself a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I'm definitely a, a bit of a memorizer, especially for TED Talks. Um, there's something to be said about having the words that are most impactful crafted for your idea that matters. And so I'm, I'm definitely a memorizer. We practiced for two months in advance with the coach. We had to rehearse it numerous times in front of the team. So it was a very rigorous process. So definitely aired on the side of memorization. So you walk out on stage. Did you have no, uh, did you have nerves? Were you in the zone or neither or both? I was terrified the night before. I was terrified the moment before. Mm -hmm. And then the moment I walked on the stage, um, and by the way, this was just the second talk I'd ever given in my life. Oh, so my. Wow. I now have a professional speaking career. And I'm just one of those people who just dives in deep whenever they want to do something new and just goes for the challenge. So this was the, the, the first TEDx talk I did. It was my second talk in my life. I was terrified. And what I learned about myself was as long as I know the first sentence and the first sentence is a remarkable opening, the rest of it just flows right out of me. And I've done the preparation work. And so that's for me, I was scared up until I said that first sentence. And then it was like I was in another planet and I was in a zone where I was so focused on just my message that nothing else mattered. So know your first sentence. Uh, other than that, what's a tip technique or a tool that helped you? Really up, up, up your game when it comes to storytelling. Uh, so for me, you know, there's great things to be said about logical flows. And I think that's very important. But when you're thinking TED Talks and you're thinking about really powerful talks, really amping up your game around storytelling and getting down to one idea per slide. So it's not just one powerful idea for the whole talk, but one story, one message you want people to walk away with per slide. That's really key. It's almost what you don't say that's just as important as what you do say. Um, I found myself, when I was cutting things out, it was cutting out the over explanation. We have a tendency to over explain mm -hmm. and instead really just saying a powerful statement and being comfortable as a speaker to just let that stand. Well, and that's usually my next question is what was the most painful part to cut out? And it sounds like philosophically you, you already understood that, but you know, we can, we can understand how important it is to cut things out and then actually doing the work crystal to, to actually cut it out can be a difficult thing. So even though you, you understand the principle, were there parts that were still difficult for you to cut out? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many stories of, you know, you talk about the corporate fail TEDx talk. I mean, that's all about millennial and Gen Z entrepreneurial spirit. There are so many stories, so many people I could have chosen to highlight, so many companies doing great work in that space. And 
really, it was very, um, that was the hardest part was figuring out which stories to tell. And then, yeah, not over explaining, having the confidence as a speaker to, to say, you know, I'm just going to put out that bold statement and let it stand. Well, we've been enjoying the Blitz round with Crystal Kadakia. Her talks are called Millen Millennials, Digital Coma or Digitally Powered, as well as the other one, Corporate Fail, Gen Z are entrepreneurial. If you want to check out either or preferably both of those talks, you can go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We will have links to both. All you have to do is click your finger down on that link. You'll be able to see them as well as I've got link, uh, her, uh, Crystal's LinkedIn profile available right there on the show notes page so that you can connect with Crystal. Oh my gosh, that workshop about the game of life through somebody else of a different age group's uh, eyes. So powerful. And you can connect to Crystal over on LinkedIn. And we're going to be back in just a moment with the final word of advice from Crystal Kadakia. Nathan, give me one sure. second because my phone is about to die. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me run. And I'm, I'm going to spare, I'm going to spare the, 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 the thing that someone else might say about phones and technology and all of that. I appreciate the, uh, the, the fair warning. It's all good. Tech gods, you will not have the upper hand today. I, I have a backup plan. We have a tertiary plan. And gods of technology, you can give us your worst. And here we are still given a great podcast interview. Sorry if you are hearing some craziness. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, it plugged in. <laughs> All right, plugged in. All right. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It is time for the uh, – actually, it is not time for the Blitz round. We already did that. It, it, welcome back, everybody. It is time for the final word of advice to Talk Universe from Crystal Kadakia. Yeah, so my final word of advice is really to build your resilience and confidence and believe that you really can make and create something. I think a lot of times speakers, consultants, thought leaders, you think you don't have a unique point of view, even if that's your field. And you really do. You can say something from your own experience and have it come out as a really unique point of view. So just think about being bold, really believe you can make or create something and go up there with that attitude. Well, Crystal Kadakia, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks so much, Nathan. All right. Hey, we 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 won. <laughs> that one was a battle. Oh my god. How about it. We did it. All all I on Facebook Live. We're just you're pivoting like a pro on your end, Crystal. I've got my backup <laughs> plan. We had to we had to stick you kind of in the uh in the green room a couple times. You kind of automatically bounced over there. And I'd never really seen that happen before, but uh, we got so you back weird. and it works. So, so weird. <laughs> I, I really have nothing to say about I'm so confused about what happened. Yeah. I was just floating out in some weird. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's a great platform when it works. And there's there's some weird things about this platform. And unfortunately, it's visually so much better than Zoom and some of the other premium services that I pay for. I mean, Zoom is great. It's like a rock. It's reliable, uh, but it doesn't look this good. And visuals really, unfortunately or fortunately, they matter a lot. So did, did the video yeah. come back at any point? No, my end, no, no video. On my end, I couldn't see you and then I yeah. could see you. So I didn't know if it came back. And so like no. right now you still can't see me. We've got a, a black square on your side, but we can hear Weird. you. So it's all, it's all good. It's all, all good. Right. And, cool. and, and we saw you at the beginning. So that's, that's okay. You know, we, we just know how to pivot. Yeah. It works. You know, out. it's fine. So. Good deal. And well, we're actually so we're actually picking up viewers. It must be the drama and the, the heroic struggle <laughs> uh, here. So, Crystal, thank you very much. I'm going to put you over, uh, escort you. And I'm going to put I got uh, the languaging, Nathan, the languaging. What a you know, stick or 
put or what? No, I'm going to escort you over to the <laughs> to the green room. Crystal, thank you so much. Uh, podcast comes out in about nine weeks. However, this is immediately shareable, so uh, you can wiggle your finger. You can you can share the technology, the crazy battle crazy of the technology, technology and how Crystal and Nathan overcame it without too much of a struggle. And when you hear the edited podcast episode, my uh, tech ninja does such a great job. You won't even know anything was going on. So uh, this is going to rock. Thank you so much, Crystal and Linda. Last and not least at all, here she is, Linda Hales. How are you? How are you? Can you hear me? I sure can. Yay! Can you hear me? I can awesome. hear you. All right. Well, very, very good. Let's do a five count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Very good. And let's do, where, where are you on my spreadsheet here? <laughs> Linda, there she is. Okay. Change the destination. Women come to Linda when they want to figure out why they are not getting the results they want in love, business, and life. High achieving women sometimes flow in a masculine form, but she believes women can be both feminine and powerful. And you sent me uh, your uh, LinkedIn. It's at Linda Hales. And uh, was uh, how was that bio? Was that was that good? That was good. That's what you I like said. That? That's you, what you, you, well, that's so what you said. I just, Look, yeah. you read so great. I, I've got <laughs> a lot of practice on the. Uh, on the the last second read, so <laughs> and I awesome. realized I realized I need to make a decision. I was either gonna like you know, hey, here are even more directions for everybody who who doesn't you know we don't have time for directions, or I can just pivot and and do the best I can of a read. So that's what we'll right. do. Any questions before we go here? No, I'm excited. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, we are live in three, two. We are live with Linda Hales. Linda, are you ready to talk? I am ready. I am always ready to talk. Women come to Linda Hales when they want to figure out why they're not getting the results they want in love, business, and life. High achieving women sometimes flow in a masculine form, but Linda believes that women can be both feminine and powerful. Linda Hales, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much for having me. So your talk is called Change the Destination. And as you say, you know, in the bio, I mean, uh, so there, there's a masculine energy, there's a feminine energy, you know, business sometimes often favors the one kind, and then women often can be in a little bit of a self-perceived disadvantage. And I love how you're flipping all this stuff on its head. So Linda, <laughs> please take us behind the talk. Well, let me tell you, when I did the talk in March, I, I always say um, you've got to be a product of your whatever it is that you're pushing, right? You're doing the Be The Talk podcast, so you have a podcast. You did a TED Talk. You interview mm -hmm. people who did TED Talks. For me, when I stepped on that stage and the topic was actually bridges, but we could play with it. So I chose Change the Destination. My talk was at a university in the College of the Cayman Islands. So my demographic were going to be like millennials. Well, and, and this I'm, was, I'm interrupting, but the Bridges, that was the women's event, right? No, the Bridges was actually the TED Talk, That was the, the actual topic, but you could play with it within your yes. title. Yeah, right? okay. But the people in my audience were millennials from, you know, okay. people from college. And um, for me, it was so powerful because I was speaking to the audience from my own experience of changing the destination of my own life. <laughs> Powerful stuff. So how did you do that? How did you change the destination of your life? You were going in one direction, then you had to pivot because you weren't getting the results you wanted. So what, what did you do and where did you go? Awesome. Thank you for asking me. So I, I you know, you, you mentioned your age a little while ago and I'm going to mention mine. I'm not ashamed. I'm 45 years old. And so, woo, yeah, Generation baby. X represent. <laughs> oh yeah. And so I was a stay at home wife for like the, the second part of my life, which was my, my entire adult life up until very recently, up until about 10 years ago, up until that time, I literally coasted in the passenger seat of mm. my life, which is why mm. the TED Talk spoke to me so greatly. Mm. I was a passenger in my own life. I threw myself into motherhood, which I love. 
I do not regret being a mom. I, I, I think I'm, I know the first speaker said she was like the best mom, but I'm like right up there in the top 10. <laughs> so, <laughs> but after, you know, my divorce happened and I found myself in this place, like, what do I do with my life? I'm not mm. ready to, you know, what do I do? And being at ground zero, like when you've hit rock bottom, that's probably the best place to be because you really don't have anything to lose. You truly can mm. rebuild yourself, remake your life. And so I changed the destination. I went back to school. I got my degree in psychology, human behavior. Then I began to you know, uh, speak to women. My whole relationship coaching business was birthed from that. But then the market was asking me, Linda, how are you coaching? How are you doing this? How are you doing your TED Talk? And so I began to expand. And here I was in the Cayman Islands. Uh, fulfilling two of my biggest dreams to become a TEDx speaker and to do it internationally. And so I was truly speaking from my own experience on that stage. I was living it up and I was giving it to them truly live. I just changed my destination on this stage. Literally hmm. you can too. So that was, there was a lot riding on that. So international, you fly out there and you give this talk that's like a stake in the ground and it changes the trajectory of your life Absolutely. and you're, you're changing the trajectory of your life as you're making the statement live in front of a whole bunch of people after really 10 years of, of a challenge that is very, very common. So many uh, women are single moms and go through that exact process, all of the feels, all of the challenges, all of the unknowns. And this was just back in, you said, March. This was in March. And so I literally, when I speak about it now, even if you're looking at me, it's hard not to get emotional over it mm. because I am a living, walking billboard that you can change mm. your life whenever you decide and you can do the thing, whatever that is, and so, be happy. So the last six months have been a, a really happy roller coaster from you, it sounds like. A whirlwind because yeah. I was actually stuck in, I only got to do relationship coaching. My degree is in psychology. This is, it felt comfortable because I came out of an abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. But the truth is human behavior is predictable. Whether you have a relationship with your money, a relationship with your work ethic, a relationship with your children, a relationship with men. I can talk to you about that. Literally you and I can talk and your whole life can change. I'm not bragging, but you know, it's a little, a little, a little bragging. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this is this is why we dig under the talk because hey, you, you get talk universe. We all want to get on that stage, give the talk to change the world, have a nice branded stage that is going to help sharpen whatever it is that you stand for, whatever you're going through, whatever solutions that you offer. And that's exactly what Linda's talking about right now. I mean, when when women need to change their trajectory of their life and something's not working. They talk to Linda and she sets them straight because she's the example of this powerful Ab stuff. Absolutely. And I'm telling you not to get on here and speak about, but women need to know that there's someone out there just like them. My credit suffered greatly because of my mm -hmm. divorce. And for many years I was like, Oh, I can't do anything with my life. My credit is bad. Girl, take control of that thing. You can fix it. You can do it. You that's my, ma my, my motto. You can do it. You can do, do it. it. Do it, ladies. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I guess what I want to do uh, in my my last question to you before we, we pivot over here, Linda, sure. I mean, a year ago, a year ago, you're prepping for this talk. What were you doing? Were you feeling the pressure? Did you put a little bit of pressure on yourself? Because this is going to be your big stake in the ground. How did you get out there, walk out and successfully do this talk? Well, I live in Houston, Texas, and that is home to the largest church in the nation, Lakewood Church. I speak Spanish. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm bilingual. I have been translating at Lakewood Church for Pastor Joel Osteen and the entire pastoral staff for about two and a half years. Oh, wow. And so there's one particular preacher there. His name is John Gray. He's very powerful, very charismatic. You know, he's, he's when he speaks, he just uses all of these phrases. And when I translate, I use the same intonation, the mm. same, you know, everything. And so... Translating at Lakewood truly prepared me wow. to take this stage because my speaking skills, every Wednesday mm -hmm. I'm translating, every Sunday I'm mm -hmm. translating. And so I was, I was, that was my coaching. And, and, and let's just, let's just, uh, if, if, if this is starting to ring a bell about translating from the stage, this isn't really a stage. This is like a, a basketball arena, right? 
This yes. is like 25,000 people. This is a sports arena that Linda is standing on and translating from for one of the top public f- figures and most, you know, uh, in spite of himself, really one of the most controversial <laughs> public speakers just because the guy is so positive. He will never say a negative thing. <laughs> He'll never, but, you know, it, it's never religious. It's yes. all about living your best life. Yeah. And, so and, and he gets so it. much flack for that. Uh, and and yet you'll never hear him saying anything negative. I remember uh, the hurricane last year and there was all this oh, stuff yes. that happened. And he just he ultimately was completely vindicated. I've heard all kinds of stories. But anyway, so that stage. All right. That yeah. stage. So Linda was prepared because she was learning from from some really masterful folks. Speakers, and, yes. Yeah. So what, what's your final word before we pivot over to the blitz round here, Linda? Listen, truly, truly, truly change the destination. You have an internal GPS. It's like your check engine light or whatever. When it doesn't feel right, when you hate your job, when listen to that thing, listen to it. Listen, if you hate your job, you want a raise. Guess what? You can give yourself a raise within the next three weeks apply for another job at another company and ask for more money. It's that simple. I literally came to Houston five years ago and that's what I did. I came here making 39 a year. And by the end of that year, I'd given myself a $21,000 raise. Why? Because I left the company and went somewhere else. You're not a tree. Move. Oh, this is powerful. We're about to pivot (laughs) over to the blitz round. We've been talking to Linda Hales. Her talk is called change the destination. We're going to hear more from Linda over in just a moment in the Blitz round. And we're back for the Blitz round. We are here with Linda Hale. She already had a uh, kind of a, a, a not so final word of advice that I that I gave over there. And I can't wait for the next one. But now it is time for the Blitz <laughs> round. I'm going to ask Linda a series of either or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent branded talk. Linda, are you ready? I am ready. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I applied and it was not my first time applying. I had actually given up because I had applied so many times, but like so many people, we did not follow through. I was like, well, I didn't hear back from them, whatever. Mm -hmm. This time I believe heavily and greatly in creating your life. If you haven't Mm -hmm. noticed, that's my theme. I said, I'm going to apply for this talk out of the country. I'm going to go get my passport. Like it's already a done deal. And that's what I did. And I started telling everyone I'm going to the Cayman Islands. So yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, that's why in the get accepted course, we, we hammer on that piece. It's like, what, what did Linda do? She stacked the deck in her favor. She made it happen. She made the numbers work for her. Powerful stuff. Are you a memorizer an improviser or a blender, Linda? I am a blender. I believe, you know, my personality type is not one that if if I memorize, I'm just going to sound so scripted and not make my impact. I I use my hands a lot. You know, my my voice, you know what I mean? Like I am a speaker, so I need to know what the key things are. And for me, it was great that I needed that we had the PowerPoint slides because they kept me on like, oh, I got to say this at at, at this particular slide. Let me not get ahead of myself. But I knew what I was saying, but my delivery was it i couldn't have scripted that it was it was real so i'm a blender linda what's a tip tool or technique that helped you a technique that helped me was practice 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 because of my personality type Mm -hmm. i can be over improviser i could be like winging it this Mm -hmm. was not the time to wing it and so one of my biggest um weaknesses is the details and so I think people, instead of running away from their weaknesses, they need to know what that is and work on it to improve it or delegate it. But in this case, I couldn't delegate it. I had to get on that stage and do it. So I had to prepare, 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 practice, practice, practice. So uh, this is the cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out? Okay, this was, it, it, it was my, I had exactly what I wanted to say for my final slide. It was going to be very impactful. But then somebody was in the front, like doing the flashlight like this. And I was like, oh, my God. OK, bye. You know, <laughs> and so you can't really tell that when you watch my talk. But I knew that the the final, the grand finale that I had prepared, I didn't deliver it. And then when I got off the stage, they were like, oh, you had three more minutes. 
And I was like, well, why are you oh. flashing the thing like that, man? <laughs> you know, but I, <laughs> oh. that was, I should have just been like, okay, that's letting me know I need to hurry. But I, instead, I kind of panicked inside, even oh. though you can't tell because I'm so smooth. Yeah, well, you're, you're very smooth. Uh, what what should be smooth, if you're part of a volunteer team or if you're an organizer listening to this right now, I think that the takeaway is make sure Prepare your them. speakers know where the real signal is, the monitor. Uh, yes. I've, I've heard of very dramatic things that, that speakers can do when you're starting to uh, wind down the time and make sure that we're not putting undue mix signals or pressure before the time on our speakers so that they kind of truncate their their amazing ending but it, i'm sure linda it just sounded just fine we the rest of us never know which is why exactly why i ask that question here's my final question for you yes. what was the most actually it's my second to final okay what was my most uh, what is your most unexpected strange or just plain weird thing that happened before your talk or during your talk the thing, and it keeps happening. It's it's a, the surreal moment. It was 2009 when I watched my very first TED talk. It was Gary mm. Vaynerchuk. Mm. We're not even gonna talk about Gary. <laughs> and at that point, I was uh, I I was a stay at home mom with a GED. I really didn't have a, 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 an idea of what's spreading, but the seed was was planted mm. in my soul, and it continued to grow. And eight years later, the fact that I was standing on that r elusive red dot, that I was impacting people outside of the country. That was unexpected. And so you see how I'm getting emotional? Oh, Even yeah. when I delivered it then, to, to think about it now is mm. still unexpected. That what, me, me, I can impact people. It's, it's surreal still to this moment. You know, the number one thing as I'm, uh, as I talk to people and we have a get accepted course for people, the number one thing that I get in terms of, I, I don't even want to call it an objection, but just a, a question. People say, hey, I don't have an idea worth spreading. They say, I don't know what to talk about. Nobody would want to hear from me, which we know is a complete lie. And yes. it, that's the whole reason for these talks. It's democratized, short form ideas that are idea centric instead of speaker centric. What would you say, Linda, to that person listening to this? Say, hey, I want to give that talk, but I don't know what to say. And I don't think I have anything worth sharing. What would you say to them? I would say, first of all, if, if that's you, find someone like Nathan Find someone like I, I coach people, Robin. I'm not here to promote that. Find someone who's already done it. I mean, Tony Robbins says, if you want to shorten the curve to success, find someone who's already done what you've done and then duplicate what they did. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. You do have a message. It's inside of you. Your life experience has served you. It has brought you for such a time as this. It's there, but you need someone who is gifted in taking it out of you. It's like if you buy a race car and it has all this horsepower, but you don't really know how to drive it. So you never get the full race car feeling. You just driving around a Hemi. But if you went to learn how to drive, you know, that way, you could definitely take the, the potential out of that engine. That's exactly how it is. If you have a desire to do it, find someone like Nathan, find a program where they can pull it out of you because you do have an idea worth sharing. So we've been talking in the Blitz round with Linda Hales, and her talk is called Change the Destination. You can watch that talk at our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We'll have a clickable link there. You can also connect to her on LinkedIn at Linda Hales, Linda, L-I-N-D-A, Hales, H-A-Y-L-E-S, Linda Hales on LinkedIn. We'll have a uh, link right there on uh, be the talk.com in the show notes page. We'll be right back with Linda Hales in just a moment for the final word of advice. And we're back with Linda Hales. It is time for the final word of advice for talk universe. What is it? Create the life that you want and not the life that was given to you. Your circumstances what you were born into, you cannot control. But after a certain age in your adult life, you actually have been creating the life you're living now. So create the one that you love. That's my takeaway. Linda Hales, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom 
with Talk Universe. Thank you for having me. All right, that's a wrap. Awesome. Angelie stuck around. Thank you so much. I'm gonna say hi. Always interested in hearing. That's great. You did. You're very energetic. I love that you're. Um, you have this natural um, energy, like oozing out of your pores. So big energy. Yes, that was very well done. I really I enjoyed listening to you. Oh, I love it. And you know what? I was like, I'm not even going to ask Nathan for questions. I'm just going to flow because when I flow, that's the best way to do it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Connect, let's connect on Facebook, everybody. I sent Nathan a friend request. I will definitely. Well, get and hopefully uh, join me over in the alumni group. I do not spam add people to Facebook groups because it seems like the other 7 billion people do that to I me know. and may maybe you too. But if you'd like to, be, that, that's that's the next step. Just stay over in the alumni Facebook group. And that's a great way, not so much to stick, uh, uh, to, to stay in touch with me, but for one another and complimentary yeah. talks and all of that stuff. Now, uh, before I hit the off, Facebook line, go offline. Uh, uh, Cassandra Paxton, I'm not saying the, the name right, but she says you are on fire. So it's C-X-A-N-D-R-A. -A. I'm not saying that right, but uh, it's Cassandra. Cassand it is, is that what I said? <laughs> she is one of my is that Facebook. What I, said? I think that's yeah, what yeah. I said. She's one I, of my I, I, Facebook like, I don't know how to, how to pronounce that. So. She's amazing. Nope. She's part of my tribe. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm uh, showing the the uh, the comment right there. You are off uh, fire. That's one of the cool things it. about this uh, platform is you when people actually type things in, it's pretty cool. Yolanda Perkins says you Linda is the bomb dot com. <laughs> Yolanda Perkins cool. was the person who inspired me to do my TEDx talk. Oh, After really? she did hers, I was like, girl. How do I do one? And every time I gave up, she was like, "Did you get your TED talk yet?" And I was like, ah. "Girl, no." And she was like, "You better, you better." And so I love her. Shout love out it. to Yolanda. She is well, more Yolanda. Than Yolanda. It sounds like Yolanda might be somebody that I should think about uh, uh, looking at and and possibly yes. bringing on the talk because you know every yes. you know part of part of the hard thing when you have a very kind of um, restrictive criteria like having you know being one of only a hundred thousand people have given a branded talk which can include you know q idea city and uh and ted and i mean these short form idea centrics but it's like everybody in the grandmother's like oh i i talked at the local you know do-gooder club or the <laughs> i did the graduate and it's like nah you know that's the, there are a lot of great toastmasters podcast go Go over there, yes. you know, but Yolanda, reach out to me and I'd like to watch your talk. So please I will let her out. I will let her know and connect. Yeah. With us. And I appreciate the comment and uh, appreciate the activity. So uh, let's all wave goodbye to everybody there. And I'm going to go offline and we can still talk. But I'm going to end the broadcast right now when that's.